pep talk today. So yes. what are we talking about today, Keith? Well, I was told we were going to talk about tramming. We are. Do you know what tramming is? Yes. So what is tramming? It is when you tram your machine. That's good. You like that? Yeah, that's it's good. when you make sure that your bit is absolutely perpendicular to your work surface. Right, or mathematically you could say it's, it's normal, normal to your work surface. Yes. But we're going to use the word perpendicular because... Then why would you bring up normal? You just wanted to show off. I can actually spell perpendicular. I, I can spell normal. <laughs> wow, we're pretty Go ahead. Good. Anyway, so yeah, so uh, before you go tramming your CNC though... Dumb the, question. Uh-huh. Okay. Why would it matter? If yeah. my bit is absolutely, perfectly perpendicular to a flat work surface. Actually, if you used a really tiny bit, it probably wouldn't, right? Except for maybe you would take out some walls as you were cutting. But the larger the bit goes, you can imagine if it wasn't perpendicular, then your cuts would be at an angle. And you would actually, if you uh, like resurfaced your spoil board, you would see that everything you got little is kind ridges. of jagged. looks like yeah. a little sawtooth in a plane, okay. if you will. However... By saying that, the, the thing that you need to do though before you actually uh, start tramming anything is to make sure that you watch the video on flat. Or flat is flat, I think is what yes. uh, Kristen named I it. I thought that was very creative. Yeah, thank flat you. Flat is... Yeah, that's that, Kristen. Oh, it was? Yeah. It was oh, here I was going to make fun of you. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> okay. You shouldn't make fun of her. No, I'm not. Yeah, you shouldn't. No, it'll be bad. It'll be bad. <laughs> anyway, so... Before you start tramming your CNC, whether it's uh, somebody else's, the E3, the E4, or the KL7, which we'll touch uh, on too, uh, you want to make sure that your CNC is set up and the table is flat. Watch the video. It'll be helpful. Yeah. Right? So the next thing is, is you can buy a tool. Uh, this is actually a tramming tool. You put it in the router, and then you can roll this around, and it will tell you uh, what's out, you know, if it's angling this way or that angle, or angling that way, you know, whatever, whatever way that it's out of perpendicular. Boy, that was a handful. That was a mouthful? A mouthful, yeah. Yeah. But you don't need this tool, although I would recommend it uh, if, if you got a CNC, because it's, it's really kind of handy to set it up. I mean, we got one to set up our CNC routers. Uh, but the idea is, is you need to make sure that uh, the, the dial indicators uh, are on the same same uh, mark as it goes all the way around. So how can you do this on, let's say, the E3 and the E4? Yeah. Well, is it? What are you saying? How to make sure that the mark is yeah. the same? Yeah, or we have to, to do that to make the adjustment. Okay. How do you make the? Yeah. yeah. When the E3 and E4, it's pretty much it's, out of the box. Set. Yeah. It's it's fixed, <clears throat> but it could be you know depending on the build and the tolerance, it could be out a little bit. And the way that our customers are handling it. And if you're wrapping it around the Y axis, is you could you know tighten the top bolts tighter than the bottom bolts, or if it's uh, too far out, you could actually shim uh, the rollers on the top for the SG20U bearings and and bring that outer in, right? So now we just really have rotating around the X axis, okay? Right, which uh, that would be as if you were looking at it straight at the spindle, you know, the spindle slide this way and that way. That one's a little bit more difficult with the E3 and the E4. Uh, first of all, you need to make sure that your uh, the bearings are snug up against the rails. And then after that, uh, a lot of folks are actually shimming the, the router a little bit at the top. You can also loosen the screws on the router itself, the, the bottom mount, yeah. and, and get a little bit. It shouldn't be off very far, so it doesn't take much to adjust it. So on the KL series, we actually, on the... Uh, when it's going around the x-axis or again looking straight from the spindle uh, straight on we actually put slots on both sides of the bearings right and then we put set screws in there so that uh, you can adjust it get it uh, the way that it needs to be and then locked it down and again with the uh, y uh, rotating around the y-axis it would be the shims and we, we include use. extra shims yes we actually got some shim stock or some shim washers uh, to do that so uh uh, honestly, on the ones that we've set up here at the shop, at the ones that we built for the KL series, never had to use the shims, but we do have to tram them. So uh, for the KL7, uh, we'll write a procedure on that, and maybe we can write a blog uh, on the uh, tramming the E3 sure. and the E4. So if you have any questions about that, guys, go ahead and email uh, Shop Talk at Bob CNC. If uh, not, uh, we'll talk to you next time. Till then.